Hi everyone, in this video we are going to do a spectral analysis for a particular question which is involving four different organic spectra. So the question reads, the spectral data for a molecule with a molecular ion peak of 108 mass to charge ratios is demonstrated below. Determine the structure of the molecule. So what we'll do is we'll analyze each of the spectra that are provided to us, we'll work out what the molecular formula is, and then we'll work out what the structural formula is, and link them back to our analyses of each of the spectra. So the first spectrum that's provided to us is the infrared spectra. Looking at the infrared spectrum, the first thing that we recognize is that there is a peak at 1680, which helps to distinguish that there is the presence of a carbonyl carbon. Then we'll look at what functional groups can have a carbonyl carbon. So the possible functional groups are an aldehyde, a ketone, an ester, or a carboxylic acid. However, in order for it to be a carboxylic acid, there must be a broad peak around the 3000 range. We do not see that in this infrared spectrum, and therefore we can eliminate that as one of the possible functional groups of our compound. Next we'll move on to the mass spectrum. The question indicates that we have a molecular ion peak at 108 mass to charge ratios. That is this peak over here. But what we notice on the mass spectrum is actually there is an M plus 2 peak. An M plus 2 peak indicates to us that this is a halogenated compound that contains either chlorine or bromine. There is also a base peak at 59, which we may look at later to determine the fragmentation pattern of the molecule in order to confirm its structure. Next we'll look at the C13 NMR spectrum. The carbon-13 NMR spectrum has three peaks, which indicates to us that there are three carbon environments. From here, we can try and work out what the molecular formula is going to be. So our possible general formula are CnH2n minus 1 OX, where X is a halogen, or it could be CnH2n minus 1 O2X, where X again is a halogen. The carbon-13 NMR tells us that N must be greater than or equal to 3. So from here, we can test if it's either chlorine or bromine by substituting them into the equation. Let's try for chlorine first. If the aldehyde or ketone contains chlorine, then the compound formula would be CnH2n minus 1 OCl. This means that 12n plus 2n minus 1 plus 16 plus 35 would equal to 108. We can solve this inequality by working out that 14n must equal to 58. Because there is no whole number n which fits this equation, this cannot be the general formula where x is Cl. Let's now test for Cl again, but for this formula, CnH2n minus 1 O2x. Again, 12n plus 2n minus 1 plus 32, which is the molar mass of O times 2, plus 35, equals to 108. We get 14n is equal to 42 by solving this inequality. Unfortunately for us, n equals to 3 fits perfectly into this equation to give us a molecular formula that satisfies the mass spectrum. This means the general formula must be C3H5O2Cl. And that helps to confirm that, indeed, our functional group is an ester. Next, we'll look at the proton NMR. The proton NMR indicates that, that there is a singlet with an integration of 2 and a singlet with an integration of 3. Integration means the area underneath the curve indicates to us the number of hydrogens that there are. Because there are only singlets, and this is an ester molecule, this must mean that there is a carbonyl carbon in the center, and the reason for that is because in order to produce this singlet splitting, there must be adjacent carbons which contain no hydrogens attached to them. If you did not work out what the general formula was, this is going to provide you with extra information to confirm that it could not be an aldehyde. So from here we can work out what our potential molecules can be. So it could either be methyl chloroethanoate or chloromethyl ethanoate. Now we need to distinguish which of the following isomers this formula is going to refer to. That is why we now need to look at our mass spectrum and interpret the fragmentation patterns. 
what we'll do is we'll analyze very common fragmentations, which are going to be the separation of the two sections of the ester between the carbon to oxygen bond. So let's test out this left hand compound first for methyl chloroethanoate. If we severed the CO bond here, we would be left with this fragment, which is C2H2OCl. C2H2OCl has a molar mass of 77. And we see quite a strong peak on the mass spectrum at 77. The other fragment that would be formed is CH3O. CH3O has a molar mass of 31, which we can see a small but albeit present signal over here on the mass spectrum. So at the moment we are confirming that it could be this. However, we would need to check for our other isomer to make sure that this spectrum indicates to us methyl chloroethanoate. If cleavage occurred here for this particular isomer, we would get one fragment, which is C2H3O, which has a molar mass of 43. 43 produces a very, very weak signal on the mass spectrum, which is almost non-existent. The other fragment is CH2OCl. CH2OCl has a molar mass of 65. This signal is also pretty much non-existent on the mass spectrum. Given this evidence, it is most probable that methyl chloroethanoate is going to be our molecule of choice. So let's see if it links with all of the other analyses that we have done. The molecule is consistent with the IR spectrum because of the presence of the carbonyl carbon. The mass spectrum indicates to us a molar mass of 108 mass to charge ratios. That is also correct for our molecule, which has the formula C3H5O2Cl and is also consistent with the carbon 13 NMR because there are three carbons which are all bonded to different things. Also, only singlets are produced because for the carbons that contain hydrogen, the adjacent carbons do not contain any hydrogen. So now we can properly complete our answer by drawing a larger diagram of our compound. And this structure is going to be our final answer. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.